A big thank you to Moxie Beauty for sponsoring this video and hosting a giveaway for you guys. I'll talk about the giveaway a little later in the video. So in this video, I'm going to compare the Moxie Beauty leave-in conditioner to the curl cream. I'm going to take you through both styling routines and then we're going to compare the results in detail. Before I style my hair, I always make sure to comb through a few times. This is to smooth the hair down to make sure that the hair is laying flat and there are no bumps along the hair lengths. I use this much product for two sections of hair. I apply using a combination of roping, raking and praying hands and then I apply a gel. Then of course I apply my products. Leave-in is on the left side and curl cream is on the right. Again you will see that my application technique is exactly the same. After this I'm going to start creating my curl clumps with a comb. I've gone back to use using a comb for styling because my hair has grown out a lot. Only the bottom 4 to 6 inches of my hair are still in curl shock. The rest of my hair lengths have either bounced back or grown out. And so they're back to normal. I've been having a little trouble getting definition in my face framing sections. They've been refusing to curl. And so I'm going to finger coil them to give them a fair shot at definition. Then I'm going to spritz my hair with water and then scrunch. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. I'll take vertical sections and comb through to create my curl clumps. The reason I take vertical sections is because this gives my hair the most volume. If you have layers, I think this technique might work well for you. Just as before, I'm going to finger roll my face framing sections. On my hair, finger rolling works very well on stubborn sections that refuse to curl. But somehow, it does not work well on sections of hair that curl willingly. Don't ask me why. This is just what my hair has been doing these days. For the top sections, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll apply my products just as I did before and then I'll start creating my curl clumps. This technique is going to help me get some root lift and volume at the roots. Once again, for my face framing sections, I'm going to finger roll. I'll break up the clumps later so that you can see the definition clearly. For me, the most important part of my styling routine is to check for the scrunching sound. This also gives me an indication of whether I'll get a gel cast or not. If I don't hear the sound, I spritz my hair with more water. In between, I had stopped checking for the scrunching sound and it made a huge difference. My hair has changed a lot. More often than not, my hair has been refusing to form a cast. When I hear the scrunching sound, I know that I've nailed my product quantities and my product ratio. And I know that a cast will definitely form. For the last year, I've struggled with my hair so much. On each wash day, it felt like I was playing a guessing game. For me, the scrunching sound has become a nifty little indicator of wash day success. Then, of course, I end my styling routine by microplopping with a microfiber towel. This is going to remove some of the water weight from my hair. I'll plop my hair with a cotton t-shirt for 15 minutes and then I'm going to diffuse my hair for 10 minutes max on the cold setting. I've stopped hover diffusing these days. I only pixie diffuse and that too for a very short while. I do not diffuse my hair from start to finish anymore because I've noticed that it makes my definition look wonky, especially at the bottom lengths where the curl shock remains. So I'll diffuse my hair for 10 minutes until a cast has formed. After that, I'm just going to let my hair air dry naturally. This is going to give the bottom lengths of my hair time to settle. The wonky bits will also drop automatically. Now since my waves form mostly one inch away from my scalp, I root clip my hair while my hair is drying so that I can get some volume and lift at the roots. If you struggle with flat hair and flat roots and need some extra lift and bounce, you can try to hover diffuse over the root clips. I'm not doing it here because for my hair, this will suffice. My hair is completely dry now. I'll take the root clips off and then I'm going to scrunch out the crunch. I'm not using an oil to SOTC today. Recently, I've been experimenting by scrunching out the crunch without an oil. I think it somehow enhances my volume slightly. I'll keep you updated on this if I make changes in the future. I'll separate all of the coils that I've formed so that you can see the results as a whole. Now without wasting any time, let's analyze my results because I have a lot to say here. Let's talk about volume and weight. Keep in mind that the bigger the volume, the lighter the product. Straight away we can see that both products gave me very big beautiful volume. But the leave-in conditioner gave me slightly more volume. On the leave-in side, you can see that the hair looks more fluffy. It looks fuller as well. And so it's safe to say that the leave-in conditioner is slightly lighter than the curl cream. But there isn't a big difference here. And so I'm going to say that the leave-in conditioner is a level 2.4 
whereas the curl cream is a level 2.5. The weight of both are comparable, but there's a minor difference. Now let's talk about shrinkage and definition. On the leave-in side, you will see that there's slightly more elongation. Can you see that my hair looks longer somehow? Whereas on the curl cream side, you will see that my hair has slightly more shrinkage. It looks shorter somehow. This is because of the coconut in the formula. My hair always reacts to coconut in products. It enhances my overall definition. But that's the beauty of wavy hair, I guess. Some wavy hair tends to be very reactive to certain ingredients. Overall, there's no denying that both results are beautiful in their own right. One is lighter and one is ever so slightly heavier. One gives you beautiful volume and uniformity, whereas the other gives you more enhanced shrinkage. If that didn't give you enough clarity, then here's a slide with the differences. I'm including a little information on ingredients. I'm not including the entire ingredient list because I covered it in my last video. Either way, if you want, pause the video and take a screenshot here. Now let's talk about the giveaway. Thank you so much to Moxie Beauty for hosting this giveaway. There are going to be two winners. Make sure you're a public subscriber to this channel like the video and drop a comment below 10 minutes after this video goes live i'm gonna post a reel on ig leave the exact same comment under the reel also make sure that you're following moxie beauty's account as well as mine all the very best may the most deserving people win we'll announce the results on the 10th of september at 6 pm